So why exactly did Prime? So why exactly did Coach Prime go after Hall of Fame reporter Ed Werder? What's going on, folks? This is Coach Marcus for Pro Fan Talk, and hope everyone had a good Labor Day. I was out there on the grill, uh, had to tap out because of the sun, but got everything cooked. Hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken, and a little bit of sm- uh, smoked pork belly. So it was a good day. But today being Monday, the news cycle continued. And on top of being the official first week of NFL, we had the Colorado Buffaloes beat up on TCU. Uh, great game. If you haven't seen my other videos about it, please go check them out on uh, Pro Fan Talk on YouTube. But everybody's talking about the exchange that Deion Sanders had with Ed Werder. It took a while to figure out who he was talking to. So everybody by now has seen it. Go on YouTube. If you haven't, you'll find it where Deion was basically, you know, do you believe now? And you hear the guy's response, but you don't see who it is. And and it was finally revealed that it was Ed Werder. Now, Ed Werder is a, somebody that's been with ESPN for a very long time. I believe he is a Hall of Fame writer. He's good at what he does. He was good on ESPN and whatever he's done, he's been pretty, pretty damn good. Classy guy, doesn't really, I don't remember ever seeing him involved in the story in this case. And for people that are saying it was a bizarre exchange between, bizarre is the wrong word for it. Uh, You could say it was unexpected. Um, And it was, I know somebody called it one of the most bizarre exchanges that the fans had seen. Well, maybe down in Colorado, but you could, you know, there's been a lot worse or a lot crazier press conferences than that, but. Clearly, he was caught off guard. But I was trying to figure out, why did Dion go at him like that? You know, and because this is somebody that knows Dion because he covered the Cowboys for a lot of years. So he knows Dion personally. Now, I don't know if they're good friends or however you want to call that, but he knows Dion and Dion knows him. So I would think that if Ed Werder was in his presence and they wanted to talk, They've got a good enough working relationship where they would exchange pleasantries and keep it going or whatever. But I was trying to figure out why did he go after, especially after the quote where he says, I read that bull jive you you wrote. And I was like, and I, it, it took me a while to find it, but I finally found an article that mentioned it and had the, had the part that I, I believe he was kind of upset about. And this is it right here. Um, Basically, where Ed Werder is calling Dion a celebrity football coach. And this is what he takes issue with. I don't necessarily blame him. People have a way of, of um, they want to throw these adjectives around. He's a football coach. You might not like the way he goes about his business or it's not what you're used to because that seems to be the most prominent argument right now, but he's a coach. Nobody's screaming about Lincoln Riley and what he did because he's at USC. So why are you screaming about Dion? And it all comes down to you either like him as a person and the people that do are the ones that say, I believe and they support Dion and everything that comes with that. The people that don't like him have every reason in the world why he won't succeed for the most part. You have some people that are playing it safe, but for the most part, if you don't like him, you're not going to come up with anything good to say. If you do like him, you will. That's pretty much the long and short of it. But in this particular case, when when calling him a celebrity coach is kind of, at least in my opinion, a little bit disrespectful especially coming from Ed Werder, uh, somebody that knows him, but I understand what he's doing. If, you know, if that's what you feel, that's what you feel. You wrote it, he put his name on it, and Dion took umbrage with it and called him out on it. And I don't have any problem with that because I'm old school, and I remember back in the day, you know, when I was with the Eagles, if 
if somebody wrote something cross about you in the Philadelphia Inquirer, eventually those guys were going to be in a locker room and you would see them face to face. So you could question them about it and ask them about it. Um, there's that one famous interaction with uh, Bobby Bonilla and that, and that reporter in the locker room where he was like, go ahead, homeboy, make your move and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that I've never experienced anything as tense as that, but it's pretty much the same. Back then, the reporters came in the locker room and you saw these people face to face. So just like the reporters could ask you questions, us as players, you could throw the questions right back at them. Why did you write that? Why did you why did you go at like that? Um, Stephen A. Smith has an interesting story about him and Kobe Bryant, where Stephen A. Smith says something on the air and Kobe Bryant called him and questioned him and kept calling him until they had a conversation. And Stephen A. Smith explained his point and Kobe explained his points and they, you know, kind of met in the middle. But that's how it was back then. Now with social media, you get so much information from so many different places. And most of these people don't really care what they write. They just want to write something. A lot of them are being trolls and trying to be toxic on purpose just to get a rise. And that seems to be the the MO these days. You got a lot of people that willingly and purposefully put out bad information just to get the reaction. Because whether you get people that tell you you're an idiot, whether you get people that will tell you I told you so, or point out how wrong you are, you're still getting that traffic and that still counts to, you know, your ads and, and everything that goes with the social media landscape. So, but in this particular case, uh, Dion took umbrage with him being called a celebrity coach. At least that's what I take for uh what I take from it. And um all he's talking about is selling the merch and and sold out tickets and all of that kind of stuff. Nothing mentioned about him being a coach. Now, this is just one shot. This is in March. And we are in September. So this was a long time ago and that was the I guess the feeling on everything that Dion was doing because he came out loud and he came out very boisterous and, you know, talking his talk like he normally does. So this is not anything that Edwarder is new to. He's seen it. He's seen this whole game before how Dion talks and, and how he operates and all of that kind of stuff. But a lot of people gave him the same kind of treatment when he was at Jackson State. They just didn't care as much because it was the HBCU, in my opinion. If he'd have been at a big school, <clears throat> I'm sure they would have probably been asking him not to be that loud and not to be that vocal. But it, because it went with the, the culture at the HBCU being loud and the bands and all of that kind of stuff, didn't nobody have too much to say. And at the end of the day, when you start winning, everybody got to shut up and let you win. So... Granted, this was the first game. He came out hot. Nobody expected him to win. I know uh, I put the video out about James Jones on, on Speak for Yourself on ESPN's show where he was saying that the Colorado Buffaloes were going to get beat by 23. So a lot of people didn't believe in him. And this is the one, the one person that was in his space and he remembered because he's been talking about he's keeping receipts this whole time. So he's the guy that that he remembered. So he called him out on it. And I ain't got a problem with that. Now, people get, you know, you see uh, some of the stuff that, you know, that Rob Parker said about it. Uh, he didn't like it because he's part of the media and you got to be careful with it and all that kind of stuff. And, and I understand that point of view. But if you feel in some kind of way, speak on it. And that's the way Prime has always been. But the funny thing about Rob Parker, and I love Rob Parker. Let me put that out there first. Uh, he's on the show with uh, Chris Broussard, who's my homeboy, grew up across the, across the street from him. Um, so I love Rob Parker. But he does tend to have uh, the old school take on a lot of things. And in this one particular case, I'm going to play this clip for you real quick. And he does the one thing like I hate what that reporters do. And that is you hear it a lot when they talk about quarterbacks. Usually when they talk about black quarterbacks. 
because they will give and list all the intangibles, but you know there's a but coming. And they want to list everything about them being a good player, they study, they work hard, do this, that, and the other, but when it comes to the, the meat of is this person a good player or a good coach or a good whatever, now the but comes in. And this and this happens the same way. Check this out. Here's the setup. Here's the butt. And that's, you know, there's no problem with doing that because that's what he's been doing. Because at the end of the day, Dion has been consistent in his behavior, in his approach. He's been consistent. So when people see this, they don't like it. I'd rather have him do it this way because this is what I'm used to. This is safer Dion has never been that type of personality. He goes for it. They, they again. They did the same thing when he was at Jackson State, and he was winning. So, yes, he he's over the top, and he's always been over the top. Like I said, he's been consistent in his behavior. A lot of people don't like that type of stuff, but you don't have to like it because at the end of the day, he won. Because if you already know. If Colorado would have lost that game, they'd have been ready for him. And even now, when he goes to to play Matt Rule, um, when he plays Nebraska, they eventually they're gonna lose. I don't expect him to go to to run through the through the conference. He's gonna take some L's this year. And guarantee I can't. Well, I can wait because I want to see him. I would love to see him go undefeated in the conference just to shut everybody up. But you know, eventually he's going to, he's going to catch an L whether it be because, you know, last second, whatever, somebody misses a field goal, bad penalty, whatever the situation is, bad luck, you, whatever you want to call it. He's probably going to take an L sometime. And you know, all the people are going to be ready to pounce. They're going to be ready to throw that do you still believe back in his face and all that kind of stuff. And that comes with the territory. And he's going to have a response for that that people aren't going to like. So I, it always irks me sometimes when you get people. Lee Corso did the same thing, talking about that's not the way I would have done it. So I don't agree with his tactics. Well, again, did nobody say jack about Lincoln Riley getting the 26 transfers for SC because it's SC. Because Dion is doing it the way he's doing it, everybody's got a problem with it. Because it's not the way everybody's used to seeing it being done. Dion said as much, and he's absolutely correct. The NCAA has screwed up college football so badly, and they are the reason, in my opinion, the NCAA is the reason college football is the way that it is right now. They're the reason that NIL exists you still don't want to give back uh reggie bush you still don't want to give him his heisman trophy back but now you got nil deals yeah booster paid for his apartment or whatever the situation was but here's how i look at it because you got to remember you had all of these marketing deals with sc the television revenue i believe the uh the ncaa football game was out and i believe he was on the cover and even even i know when i was at eastern kentucky when i was doing my thing at eku there were a whole lot of number 40 jerseys being sold in the bookstore at sc when he was there when reggie bush was there there were a bunch of number five jerseys being sold and you saw all of that stuff in the stadium. He wasn't responsible for that. But you kick him out 
for the BS you kicked him out for. And now, after everything is said and done, you still don't want to give him his Heisman Trophy back? That's why the NCAA is in trouble. That's why they're in trouble. I, and I always, um, different sport, but I believe it was Rick Majerus way back when he coached Utah basketball, I believe. And he got in trouble because he had a recruit come up and he bought the kid a pizza. And buying the kid a pizza was like giving a gift and broke some type of rules. And he ended up getting suspended. It was crazy stuff. But the NCAA was tight like that because they wanted to protect the student athletes and all of that nonsense. They wanted to make money off of it. And anytime anybody bucked that system, it was an issue. And because of that, like, let prime be prime. You don't have to like it. And and I don't want what happens to all of the coaches that do it your way and they lose. Nobody says anything about that. So let let prime pour the confetti and, and celebrate the first win because they beat a number seven, a top 20 team ranked number 17 and they beat them. They put 45 points on. Them. And his son, the quarterback, that wasn't supposed to start or wasn't good enough to start because he played at Jackson State. That's a whole other issue. They don't want to give those athletes the opportunity to play. And just because, you know, they don't have defensive schemes at Jackson State or at HBCUs, again, that's another falsehood. There's just a difference between having a defense against somebody and you got five players in your secondary that all run under 4-5 or under 4-4. Four, four. That's the difference. You have better players. Doesn't mean he can't read a defense. So now he's got better offensive linemen, better receivers. He's got that stuff too. Now the playing field is even. And you see he showed out. So if Shador Sanders can show out and show that he belongs, Deion Sanders is just doing the same thing. So I'm like, everybody needs to just shut up and give him his props. But, like I said, everybody's waiting for an opportunity to pounce. That's it. Everybody's waiting for the opportunity to pounce. And I keep using Lincoln Riley because Colorado, they got how many? They got had 53 transfers, right? All these transfers. I think they were number one in the NCAA. But Trojans had, what, 29? They got a lot of transfers too. The point I'm trying to make is the big school, USC, is doing the exact same thing, but they're not taking the heat. And the only difference is is because Lincoln Riley is doing it the way everybody expects him to do it. The way it's been, nobody has a problem when he does it. They have a problem when Prime does it because he's the loud talker and he brings the swag and we come in and I believe and he's bringing all of that other stuff to it that everybody doesn't necessarily like because it's not their way. It's not what they're used to. And that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem. And it looks like that because he's a, he's a black coach and he's doing it his way with bringing all of the, you know, the sunglasses and the chains and all of that kind of stuff. And, Nobody can argue the fact of why Deion Sanders can recruit the way he recruits and get these kids to come to Colorado because he can speak their language. And that's going to resonate with parents and all of that kind of stuff. He speaks their language. A lot of coaches don't understand that. A lot of coaches can't do it. Because he got blasted that first press conference or when they showed the video of the meeting and he told all of the existing Colorado players, I'm bringing my own luggage in his Louie or whatever, however he said it. And basically he was saying, I got these players that's going to start because let me be honest with you. I do feel kind of bad. Who was the, who was the starting quarterback at Colorado before Shador got there? I have no idea. I don't even know what the kid's name was. But I know that kid wanted to play football somewhere, and I hope he picks up somewhere. But everybody's going to forget that because Shadur Sanders just broke a record. He did it his way, and it's working. So I really hope to see what he's going to do against Nebraska next week 
if Nebraska and Matt Rule have any type of common sense, they will run the ball all day because <laughs> Colorado's tackling was garbage and their defensive line is very suspect. Their run defense is ugh, needs a lot of work. But we'll see what they're going to do. But all these people, all the naysayers, uh, I don't mind him calling them out because you know what? Reporters can call coaches and players out anytime they want to. So you know what? Back to the old school where you can give them a taste of their own medicine and don't get mad. And you know what? Props to Ed Werder because he ain't get salty about it. He ain't make it personal. He he congratulated um, Prime and, and his son and all of that kind of stuff. He kept it classy and above board and all that kind of stuff. And I wouldn't expect anything else from him. So he he um he came back and and uh put out some very positive tweets about the whole situation and really hasn't kind of got into the whole do you believe now thing. I just think he was caught off guard. Um but it is what it is. That's going to happen and so be it. So very interesting to see how this thing continues to play out. Everybody, I, I would gather to believe that the Colorado versus um, Nebraska game is probably going to be the highest rated game going into this week. College game. So we'll see what's going to happen. I'm pulling for prime and let's see what he can do. So, as usual, if you like the content, please hit that subscribe button. Click on that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of my content. You can also check me out on A2D Radio every Thursday night at 7 p.m. on my show, Pro Fan Talk. But I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next play. Peace.